How's it going? So not long ago, Ludius, in his Ultimate Genius, came up with a new way for us to get custom components, cards, etc. for Home Assistant. And he called it Hacks. Home Assistant Community Store. I haven't set it up yet, and I've had a lot of people ask me how to set it up. So right now, that's what I'm going to do. A good place to start is probably the installation page. Uh, move from custom updater, see this special note at the bottom here. If you have custom updater installed, you need to remove that, rename the directory, or delete it completely. You will also need to remove the custom updater entry from your configuration.yaml file. If you use special endpoint, which I think I did use custom cards endpoint for Lovelace cards, you now need to reinstall that plugin using hacks and use the URL provided in the page for that plugin in the hacks UI. Okay, so we're gonna start with going to the configuration.yaml and finding the custom updater. Control F when your configuration file is 3000 lines long, you need to use Control F a lot. Updater, there it is. Okay, so it looks like I've got just a couple of custom updater things here. So I'm just gonna comment those out. I'll come back and delete it later when I don't need them anymore. Okay, I'm gonna save that. Control S. Okay, so that should be that part. Um, now we need to move the directory. So here's custom updater and it just says, if you have custom updater, you need to remove that, rename the directory or delete it completely. You will also need to remove the custom updater entry from your configuration file. Okay, let's just move it. Move to desktop. Bye-bye. Remove that directory. Did that. Remove the custom updater from the configuration file. That just says they can't operate at the same time. Special endpoints for your Lovelace cards. But we're definitely going to get some errors. I do have some cards set up for this, so I'll get some errors for that, I'm sure. All right, back to step one. Prerequisites are covered. 0.92 or newer. Get the latest release and download the source code. How do you do? <laughs> There's the man. High five him when you see him on the street. Joaquim. Cool name. Here we go. Source code. Download that, baby. Now back to the instructions. Extract the content. Move along. Move along. Now that you've extracted all the files, you'll see something like this. Custom components. Docs. Okay, let's go there. Hacks. I do see that. Uh, in the custom components named, there's a folder named hacks. Yes, there is. Would need to be copied to your Home Assistant installation. For this, use your favorite tool to get stuff to Home Assistant. For me, that's just Samba. If this is your first custom component, you'll need to create the new folder. Okay, so I need to just put it in the custom components folder. So I'm going to copy this, config, custom components, and paste. Done. And when he says you need to create a new folder. If, you, if this is your first custom component, you need to create this folder. So under your config, you make custom components folder. Okay. Okay. Anyway, the hacks folder needs to be placed under there, which we did. Uh, and hassio, the final location will be that, which it is for me. Right there. Okay. We got it. Should be done now. The next part will be to add it to your configuration. Great. If you have custom updater installed, you need to remove that. We did that. Hacks uses the GitHub API to gather information. You need to generate an access token to your account before you start using this. So we'll go here. This is GitHub. Just followed that link. I'm logged in as myself, I assume. So personal access tokens. Generate new token. Password. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Does anybody know my password for GitHub? Could help me out here a little. Thank you. What is the token for? H-A-C-S. So he does give us all of the steps here. Choices. You do not need to check any boxes. Great. Give it a name. Leave all those boxes. Generate token. Name. No checks. Generate token. All right, now you see the generated token. This will be the only time you see it. Make sure that you copy it manually or by clicking the clipboard icon. Clipboard icon. So we need to put this in the configuration. I'm actually going to put this in my secrets file. I just put that in my secrets file. And now we'll just put this section in here somewhere. Anywhere. Hacks. H-A-C-S. Tab token. And then I'm going to put secret. 
And that's what I called it in my secrets file. These are options. I don't think I use any of these, but I might as well. Uh, Python scripts and theme. All right, that's probably it. So we'll save that and we'll give Home Assistant an old, the old restart. All right, Home Assistant's back up without errors. Oh, and here's a new tab that says community. And there it is. Background tasks running, refresh the page in a little while. So I'm sure what this is doing is looking through GitHub and finding all of the things that we can put into the store. So we'll just check back in on this in a little bit, but that's it. It should be installed. I'm going to have some work to do because I'm going to have to reinstall some custom card things, I think. But we'll see what happens when this is done. Well, it took a few minutes for it to get all the information needed from GitHub. I had to refresh the page. It just kept saying it was getting more information. But once I refreshed, then that part went away. And now we're left with this screen. And if we go to store, we've got now a list of all these awesome apps. There's a few app daemon apps. There's several integrations, including some new ones I want to try out. Like this one that's breaking changes, tells you about breaking changes based on your config. That's pretty sweet. One thing you will notice right away is bang. Sorry about that noise. Bang. <laughs> Everything's broken. All the custom cards are jacked. That was what we expected. We'll need to go in here, community, store, and then scroll down till we get to the, oh, is this it? Plugins, I guess? This is where the cards are. I know that there's a lot of these I need. Oh boy. All right, compact custom header, install. Huh. So now it says it's installed. Oh, I hit reload. Oh, I hit reload again. <laughs> How does it look then when I look at the store? Does it change? Uh, now it's got a green box. So those are the ones we've got installed. All right. Well, I know I need a few of these. I think I've installed big number. Wow, that's fast and really easy. I wonder if that's all it's going to take. YouTube sensor. I use that. This is not a card, but <laughs> that's exactly what mine says. It's also for Frank. You need to restart and potentially reconfigure Home Assistant for your last operation to be loaded. Okay, so when you do a custom component like that, you need to restart Home Assistant. Okay, I'm not going to do that just yet. That's probably that color because it needs to still be restarted or configured. All right, compact custom header circle sensor. This is great because now you can discover things that are custom made for Home Assistant that maybe you didn't know were there before. Flex table gauge. Pretty sure I need this. I'd like to skip right back down to where I was. This makes me wonder what about all of like Thomas's cards? Hmm. I know I need my mini media player. Full show. Wow, that's got a lot of configuration options. I had no idea. Oh my goodness. Okay. Monster card. Need that one. Radio menu. Oh, that sounds cool. Simple thermostat, secondary entry, Roku remote card. I was using this. Need that one. Now on the overview page, it shows you all the things you have installed. Okay, let's go back here and do the button card. When you add this to your configuration, use this community plugin button card. Okay, so that's different. And that's probably why. So that's part of rebuilding all this we're going to have to do. Okay, well, we're building for the future, fellas and gals. We're building for the future. And sometimes that means undoing what you already did. Nature of the beast. Configure UI. Configure raw editor. Yeah, see these? Like this button card? Use this instead. Need to copy that. Guess just replace this. And I suppose I don't need track true anymore. So it's possible that not every card is going to be in here. Not every custom thing that's made is going to be in here. Oh, plan coordinates. Yeah, I need that one. Oh, we definitely want to use the animated. This is the one. I haven't installed this yet, but I want to because it's animated. That's fun. Oh, my button cards are working now. Okay, so that's all you have to do is just make sure you get that line right in the front there. In fact, that looks like, well, it hasn't fixed my mini media player. Okay, well, we're going to go through all of these. Uh, mini media player bundle. There we go. Let's go here. Mini media player. I need to make better use of my mini media player, it appears. So you need this mini media player. Now, I don't know why sometimes I had bundle. Okay. Let's go see if those are working now. Yep. Yay. Okay. 
monster card. Okay, it says it couldn't determine the type of element, but I still have that in mine. Monster card is a type JS. So refresh and then everything pops back in. Now my monster card's back. I think I got most of my cards back now. Yeah, oh, plan coordinates isn't done yet. There's the Roku remote, that one's done. We gotta do the new weather. That's gonna be fun. Lovelace card tools. Tracker card. Oh yeah, we don't need the tracker card anymore. All right, let's keep going. Rock and fig. What else? Plan coordinates. Okay. Again, it says it couldn't figure it out. What kind it is, it's probably just a .js. Plan coordinates type JS. Monster card I did, gauge card, big number, big number. I don't even remember what I'm using this for. I'm not sure I am. Big number. Gauge card. Gauge card. So it looks like for the JS files, it doesn't tell you what type of file or what to put under there, but this is what you need to put under there. This, where it says type JS. So these, card tools, card modder, card layout, pop-up card, gap card. So I wonder what's happening to all of these. I don't know. So my guess is Theme Maker and some of these Thomas Lovin stuff. I'll have to see what the outcome of all that is. Oh, I didn't do the compact custom header. It's only the most important one. That's funny because I just fixed that. <laughs> compact custom header. Big number button, compact custom media, gauge, plan, Roku, thermostat. Oh, I didn't put the weather card thing in there, so let's do that. Okay. So is anything not working? Quite cool fan is on and it's spinning beautifully. Looks like all that's working. That's all working. Let's do the weather one. And let's change this. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> so that's the entire configuration that you need for uh, animated weather. Yeah, I love Lovelace. <laughs> Look at that. That's fantastic. I don't even know what this means. Oh, this is wind speed, maybe. What time the sun's coming up, what time it's going down. So awesome. Are there any other integrations that I need to try? I want to try this one. Component to show potential breaking changes. I want that. Need to restart, potentially configure. Yeah, when installed, this will be located here. You'll still need to add it to your configuration file. What do we have to add to our configuration file for this? That's it. We just have to put breaking changes in our configuration.yaml file. Okay, I can do that. Done. What else? What? Programmable thermostat. Huh. Well, that looks interesting. Sure, we'll install it. Might not configure it just yet, but we'll install it. This is cool, Raspberry Pi power supply checker, that's cool. So there are plenty of other custom components that are not a part of this. Breaking changes there, the YouTube sensor thing should have been the same. And then I'm gonna come back later and probably do a programmable. As always, check your config. Ready. Okay, it's restarted. We go back to the community page. All right, it looks like it's running the background stuff again. But my breaking changes and my YouTube sensors should be there. Let's look up that breaking change one. What did it say it was going to be called? Sensor potential breaking changes. Okay. Potential breaking changes zero. So this is great. I'm totally adding this. And then I'm just going to add this one. Potential breaking changes zero. Okay, glorious. Well, that's it. Pretty awesome. The Home Assistant Community Store. Hacks for short. Big thanks to Ludius and the gang for all the work they put into making this happen. If you are a custom card maker or you have a custom component or card that you love, uh, encourage the developer so that it will show up on our list here in the store and we can try out new stuff that we haven't seen before. This is great. This is getting us one step closer to user interface based and one step further away from editing text files based. We still edit some text files, but slowly 
that will probably continue to be phased out. This is a huge step towards making Home Assistant more user-friendly. So thanks a bunch, fellas. That's all for now. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios.